Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Piyush Goel. So today we will continue where we have left on our previous video. In the last video we have discussed two ways to implement RESTful service. And in this tutorial we will implement the RESTful service via both methods which we have discussed earlier. Before we start, I want to thank all the wonderful viewers for your amazing comments and support. It truly inspires me to create the valuable content for you. If you are new here, remember to subscribe and turn on notification icon so you don't miss out any of our deep dives into the world of Tipco and beyond. And if you have any questions or any Tipco topic you would like me to cover in our future videos, please leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. So let's get started. So I am on my workspace and we need the you know schema file which we can refer for our REST service. Uh, so I have already created this BrexSD. So as you can see on your screen as well. So let's start by creating one process for RESTful service. So let's give the process name as bookstore v1 products. And package name is rest service dot bookstore dot rest. And then click on finish. In the previous videos, I have already mentioned to make a process as restful. You have to go to advanced and convert the mode to stateless. After that, you know, you have to click on this rest service icon. Once you click on it, a wizard will open and you have to give a resource name and resource service path. For this example, I will be selecting post and get operations. Let's click on next and then let's select the, you know, request and response schema for the post operation. Now let's move to the get operation and select the response schema because in get operation either we will be having the path parameter or query parameter or header parameter. So that's why it is not having the request payload. It is having the response payload. Let's click on finish. So you will see a constructor operation was created for both the methods for this endpoint. So we have two methods get and post. So to return the data, we need to, you know, fetch it from somewhere. So let's, you know, uh, create one JDBC connection and let's retrieve the data from there. Go to resource, right click on it, then select the JDBC resource. So in the JDBC connection, I will give the username as BW user and password also as BW user, which we have already created. You can, you know, watch the JDBC playlist. Same, I will select the MS SQL server and then I will, you know, put one JDBC connection string. So yeah, click on the test connection. So you will see like the connection was successful. So now let's move back to the process and add one call procedure. Go to the procedure tab and select the procedure as find products with pagination. Let's you know also select the schema and catalog. So schema is DBO and catalog is bike store. Now go to the advanced section and click on result set use schema. It will populate your input and output schemas. Now let's go you know go to the bindings and go to the get operation because we need to create the you know query parameters for our input so we will be creating three query parameters
first one will be the page and second one will be the page number and third one will be the order by so page will be of type integer and page number is also type integer and both are required so i will mark both as required order by is optional because you know if it is not provided so our default sorting logic will be id descending so that is we have implemented on our you know jdbc procedure so let's map the input of jdbc call procedure so it's giving some error about integer to int conversion let's you know do a fixed type casting so now let's map the response to the get out activity i will do a for loop over items and map all the data which we are getting from the you know jdbc call procedure because of different name brand name and category name was not mapped so let's fix that on the metadata let's you know map whatever we are getting so the page size will be mapped to page page number will be mapped to page number and total count will be mapped to the item count in retrieve that let's map you know current date time so this is done now let's move to the post operation add one more jdbc call procedure and go to the procedure select the schema and catalog and in procedure tab select the insert product and then go to advance and click on result set use schema checkbox so let's go to the input and map whatever we are getting in the request to the jdbc input let's do you know when otherwise on the price because we are not sure you know when we are creating the product so maybe you know at that time we don't have the price of that product that can be you know further updated via put operation or something on the otherwise to make it as null you have to set this as explicit nil now let's map the post out method so the call procedure will return one product id so that we will pass as you know part of this rest response so that we will pass as an output Yeah guys that is all for this and so on